race number two of season seven of the Answer A Hershey's Cup Series is ready to go green here at the newly reconfigured Phoenix International Raceway. I refuse to call it ISM Raceway because that's just a stupid name. So Phoenix International Raceway here today playing host to our second event coming off the heels of an exciting Daytona 500 which saw Tim Walsh for the first time be a Daytona 500 champion. He became the seventh different driver to win the Daytona 500 and comes into this race consequentially as the points leader and possibly with the newly condensed schedule that we have for the Hershey's Cup Series may have locked himself up a spot in this season's chase for the championship, which would make it back-to-back -back seasons for the 15 team. On the pole position for today's event, which will be 47 laps in length, which means possible pit strategy here today, and that will be the rookie Scott Roush, who comes into this race as the current rookie points leader, and he also, as obviously, is the highest running rookie in the point standings overall. Comes into this race after a solid outing in the Daytona 500, as my points are taking forever to load up. There we go. He comes into this race in the seventh position in the points and looking to maybe pick up his first career Hershey's Cup Series win in only a second start. Don't count that out as an impossibility. If you didn't tune into yesterday's Pizza Hut X Series race, Nick Gunther made his second Pizza Hut X Series start and found victory lane here going from, I believe it was, pole to win. So we'll see what's going to happen here in today's race as Scott Roush will line up alongside of former champion Chris Dodd, who is looking for his first victory since season five. When he went to victory lane at Texas, he followed or he had a win previously uh, about four races before that winning that year's Daytona 500. So it's been a long winless streak for Chris Dodd as he looks to go back to victory lane in what is going to be his final season Hershey's Cup competition. Behind them, you've got Scott Roush's teammate there, Jordan Lopez in the 79. These two were teammates last year and both found victory lane, both trying to find victory lane this year as rookies and Johnny Gardner lines up on the outside of row two. Let's go down trackside and get that command to fire them up. Drivers, start your engines! And since they're going to complete basically a full lap around this racetrack, it's time for us to give you your top 10 in the point standings coming into this race, presented by Blame Shelley Insurance. Obviously, with winning the Daytona 500, Tim Walsh comes into this race as the points leader, six points in hand over Keith Batson, who I'm certain is tired of second position. He's finished second in two of his last races uh, in the last week. He's second in points, though. Dougie Shears right now is third in points, only seven points out. We've got a tie for fourth between John Art, Kyle Matthews. They are nine points back. Then we got a tie for sixth, Anthony McCurry and rookie Scott Roush. They are 11 points back, 12 points back in eighth. That's James McLeod. And then a tie for ninth, completing your top ten, Benjamin Miles and Levi McIntyre. They are both 13 points back from the points lead. Now, if this was the normal Phoenix that we've run for the past six seasons, they would be going green right here. The start-finish line would be right down here in the middle of this straightaway. But this is the back straightaway now with the new configuration. The start-finish line's on the other side of the racetrack. And so, the old 1 and 2 is now 3 and 4. The old 3 and 4 is now 1 and 2. Hopefully, I'll remember that correctly. I did okay in the Pizza Duck Series race here yesterday. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, we have had... Five different race winners here at Phoenix in the last six seasons. Four of those five winners are in this field. We'll get to those in a moment as the green flags out. Let's roll at Phoenix. We got nine laps into the Pizza Hut X Series race before we end up having a caution. Can we do that today? I might be asking for a little too much. We'll wait and see. And there you go. There's your answer. The caution lights are on. The yellow flag is out here before we even complete lap one. I kind of expected that was going to happen. Had my fingers crossed, but uh, it wasn't meant to be. And Scott Roush got out ahead of Chris Dodd with the lead, and he will lead us under our first caution of the day. Let's see where the smoke lingers and where that incident was. Probably down here into turn one, and indeed that's the case. It's like uh, one, two sets of skid marks there going into the first corner, so it may not have been that big a wreck. Let's like a look and see. Kyle Keith is currently on pit road. Emmanuel Hartnett as well. And everybody else here is just stacked up waiting to get in line for pacing. So I think these might have been the only two sets of skids marks we saw. One belonging to the 20 and one belonging to the 29. And we got some pit stops going on here. Remember I told you they can't make it the, four fo the full 47 laps of fuel. So Baskinger, Voiles, Lopez, and others coming to pit road. Whereas Roush, Dodd, and Gardner decide to stay out. Apparently feeling this is not going to be our only caution of the day. That probably is a very safe assumption. 
So let's go back and take a look at a replay of what happened to Emmanuel Hartnett and Kyle Keith to put us under the caution for the first time here today at Phoenix. After the green dropped, everyone just fanning out down in that uh, dog leg apron area. And here you see Emmanuel Hartnett kind of comes down. McIntosh is going up. Two of them lock bumpers, and it's going to hook the 20 car around. Charles Sanford going to get a little piece of this as well. And it happens right in front of the 29 of Kyle Keith, who's going to have nowhere to go right there. Gets it in the driver's side door, and that's going to send his race car up the track there into turn one. Samfer is ooh, trying to shoot the gap there between Hartnett and the wall. He's going to get the wall with the left front of his race car, so he got a little bit more damage out of that. Looks like those cars involved, though, Samford, Keith, and Hartnett will be able to continue. But Kyle Keith finished 21st last week at Daytona. Hartnett, on the other hand, finished the Daytona 500 in the 40th position. So he really needed a good run today and doesn't look like he's going to get it unless some other drivers encounter some problems here in the upcoming laps of this race. But that's what brought out the caution. A pretty minimal wreck, to be perfectly honest. More, a little bit uh, smaller than I was expecting. And so as we get ready for the restart... Let's uh, go back to live action here at Phoenix. Green flag set to come back out here on lap 6 of 47. And as you saw, we had some drivers came to pit road, some drivers that didn't. We will have a car on the inside line to have to deal with. Is trapped one lap down now is the 29 of Kyle Keith. And out of the race is Emmanuel Hartness. So back-to-back -back weeks of poor performances for that 20 team. Not the start to the season Emmanuel Hartness was obviously looking for with his new Chevrolet Camaro out of Fire Ice Racing. It'll be Scott Roush the leader, Chris Dodd in second, Johnny Gardner third, Joshua Osborne's now up in fourth with Zachary Fitzwater sixth, then it's Cody Smart, Benny Watson, Seth Cole, John Art, and Holly Davis. That will be your top ten. In terms of our former winners at this track back in season one, it was Jeremy Jones who went to victory lane when he drove the 18 for Joe Gibbs Racing. Seasons two and three was back-to-back -back wins for Zachary Fitzwater, who's up inside of the top five here, so we'll see if he can win his third race at Phoenix. Season four, Kyle Matthews, and season five, Dylan Pote. The defending winner of this race is Anthony McCurry, winning here in season six. Green flag back in the air. Kyle Keith getting low and out of the way of everybody else. Now let's see with a single-file restart, not counting the slow, or the lower, ah, the lap car of Kyle Keith if we can maybe get into a bit of a green flag run here. Stodd trying to run down Scott Roush. Closes the gap pretty nicely there through three and four. He might be able to make a move here into one and two. He's got a big run heading down to the first corner. See if he drives up to the high side to try and make the pass. No rides in the tire tracks at the 60. Ooh. 60 got a little bit loose there, getting down the apron, had to check up, and I think Chris Dodd had to check up in relation to that. As we got a good battle back here for third. Caution's out again for the second time, though, so that'll go away. Looks like Dylan Young's on pit road in the two. So Caution's out for the second time in the first eight laps. Pretty sure I saw the Universal Studios Ford on pit road. Looks like another incident down here to turn one, and Benjamin Miles was involved. Ninth in the point standings. Another car in pit road with a lot of front end damage. That's JT Bryant, the Hawaiian Punch Ford. So two of the young motorsports Fords were in it. Daniel Gilbert sits on pit road. Tim Walsh, our Daytona 500 winner, was collected up in it, along with Jordan Anderson in the 89. Cody Lamas. So both the ML Motorsports Camaros were involved. And there is Dylan Young in the two. A lot of damage on his machine. Some other cars back here with damage. James McLeod in the 51 who came to this race top 10 the points. Eighth in the standings, I believe it was. And Anthony McCurry, sixth in points. The defending winner of this race has a lot of damage. I think I just saw a lot of damage on Voiles. That's indeed the case. A lot of front end damage on his machine. Charles Sanford is damaged. Second incident he's been involved in today. And I can't tell who of these drivers are coming to pit road for damage and who's coming in just for regular stops. There might be some rear-end damage on Levi McIntyre. I couldn't tell. I think he might have gotten a piece of whatever the incident was. And a lot of these drivers, I think, are also just making regular pit stops here under caution. Chris Dodd gave up the second position to come to pit road. Watson, Gardner, Fitzwater, they were all running up inside of the top five. I think Roush, yeah, Roush, who was the leader at the time, came to pit road. That's going to turn the race lead over to his teammate Jordan Lopez. 
Keith Batson's also got damage there on the front and the left side of his Ford, so he must have been involved. As it looks like Jordan Lopez, Jake Baskinger, and Brandon Gonzalez stay out, they will inherit the podium positions. Let's see what brought out our second caution of the day. Well, Anthony McCurry may be the defending winner of this race, but none of these drivers have had to deal with this Phoenix racetrack in this type of configuration. And Anthony McCurry, you see here, he's going to see a gap between the two Young Motorsports Fords right here, and he's going to try and fit his Camaro in there. And this just was not a smart decision, I don't think, on the part of McCurry, but I mean... You see that gap you want to go for it, and he did have a lot of momentum, too. He's going to go in between the 2 and the 22. It's just too close to do something like that, and I think... Is it going to be him hooking the 22 car? Oh, no! It, that wasn't what caused the wreck. It was further up. Okay, my apologies. I thought that was where the wreck was going to start. It actually was the lap car of Kyle Keith with our Daytona 500 winner, Tim Walsh. Look how low on the track Walsh is back there. He's got Joseph Sprigley behind him. And then Walsh trying to diamond it through, goes straight through the uh, dog leg, goes up into the left rear quarter of Kyle Keith. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what the 29 could have done there. He was running his line, and Walsh was running his line. And there's Walsh around. Look at Daniel Voiles. He sees that the cars are going high, so he tries to go low. Dylan Young clobbered Tim Walsh. And it's just on from there. JT Bryant in the back of Voiles. That sends Bryant up the track. I think he's going to be the one that gets McCrory. Anderson's into the back of McCrory there. Here come some others flying into the picture. I think top screen is going to be where Benjamin Miles gets into it. Yep, he gets into the back of McLeod. There's Tim Walsh. Goes flying after another hit from Gilbert, who got hit by Charles Sanford. Cody Lamas there involved. And upside down goes the 89 of Jordan Anderson. Nobody slowed down. Everyone just kept their foot in it and hoped and prayed they'd get through. And a number of them didn't. And that's a lot of drivers that were top 10 in the points that got involved in that. Keith Batson, second in points. Of course, Tim Walsh, our points leader. McCrory, sixth in the standings. Eighth in the standings, James McLeod. And ninth, Benjamin Miles. Now, I thought I saw some damage on the 99 of Levi McIntyre, but I don't see him involved in this wreck. So where is he at? There he is. I almost was certain I saw him with some damage on the rear of his Ford. Um, was it something coming to Pit Road? No, I guess not. I guess it's just the way those Fords are built. I mean, right there it looked like there was damage on his car, but I guess not. All right, so that's what brought out the caution. I think we're going to have a number of drivers out of the race, and as I said, that's about six of the drivers that came into this race, top ten in the points, that got involved in that one, including... Last week's Daytona 500 winner, Tim Walsh. Not really sure what the fuel window is for these drivers here today. We didn't have pit stops in yesterday's Pizza Next Series race, so whether these guys are going to have to pit again or not, I'm not certain. But drivers that have gone behind the wall after the wreck we just saw include Tim Walsh, Dylan Young, JT Bryant, Cody Lamas, Jordan Anderson, Benjamin Miles, Daniel Gilbert. They joined Emmanuel Hartnett in the garage here. We're going to have a couple of lap cars again on the inside line. Kyle Keith in the 29 and Cole Baker in the 18, who I think is still sitting on pit road. Top 10 when we go back green. It'll be Lopez, Baskinger, Gonzalez, Batson, McCrory. Those drivers stayed out. And then the drivers came to pit road that restart 6 through 10. Scott Roush, Johnny Gardner, Zachary Fitzwater, Benny Watson, and Joshua Osborne. We'll have to see about that 39 and 61. We know both of them were involved in that latest wreck. So we'll see if they are up to speed or if they're going to be a bit of a hindrance for the drivers behind the green flag back in the air here at Phoenix. So far today, it's been the Kevshear Racing Tech cars out in front. Scott Roush led earlier and now Lopez out in front. Nick Gunther yesterday dominated the race. He was a driver out of the Kevshear Racing Tech Stables. Third caution of the day is out. So this is definitely not like our Pizza Deck Series race yesterday where we had a couple quick cautions and then went green to the end. We are experiencing a wreck fest here today at Phoenix. And Lopez will lead us under our third yellow flag. Another incident over in turn one. There was a car on pit road that looked like it might have been Daniel Voiles. Dougie Shears, third in points, is coming to pit road. Sean Galligan in the 44 with quite a bit of damage. He's on the pit lane. 
John Art, another driver, top 10 in the point stands. Fourth in points coming this race involved. Shane Lakes on pit road. And that is indeed the 26 of Daniel Voiles. And the outside pole sitter, Chris Dodd, out of the race in the eight car. Wow, a lot of damage on the front of Joshua Osborne. Tweenix Racing teammates Seth Cole and Dylan Poteet with a lot of damage. Kev Shear has got damage on the rear of his car. Cody Smart's come to pit road. I don't know if that's regularly scheduled or not. A lot of rear end damage on the Whataburger Camaro of Chris Dollerton. And I thought, no, I, th I thought there was some damage on RJ Reynolds, but I guess not. So as the caution waves once again, and we continue the pacing game here at Phoenix, let's take a look at a replay. This is a battle uh, just around the 10th position here. Osborne goes down onto the dogleg apron. Jessica Shelton's going to take a look to the inside, and it actually looked like the 27 got out of shape before Shelton even got to him, and he was already around, and then she just kind of helped the rest of the process right up the racetrack. Nowhere for Shane Lake to go. Chris Dodd comes flying in. Swigley, Dollerton, John Arndt, Sean Galligan, Seth Cole, Dallas McIntosh, Dylan Poteet all into that. Just never stopped. Citadino might have gotten a piece of that. Levi McIntyre was up on the high side. Dougie Shears was in that. Actually, I think Shears is spinning further up. Yeah, there he is. Kev Shearer and Holly Davis got together. I believe that was uh, Osborne that just got into Dougie Shears. Shears gets another shot from Dylan Poteet. Sam forgot a piece of that one, too, I think. There's Galligan, the 44. Boy, I mean, these drivers are being able to handle it pretty well until they get to that uh, dog leg, and then they start making really aggressive moves, and it's just not working. James McLeod, eighth in the point standings. His day is over. He had already retired before we saw that. And there is Chris Dodd in the eight car. Oh, and then we almost had another wreck right here. Actually, we did have another wreck. As Sanford tried splitting the gap between Osborne and McIntyre, he's going to get spun around, and I think he saves it. I think McIntyre helps him get straightened back around, but we had another incident there on the back straightaway. Caution's out again. Will we ever get a green flag run? We may have to kill about three-quarters of the field to do it. Green flags have to come back out again. We are working our third caution of the day, and we have just barely completed the first 15 laps of this race. Lopez continues to lead. Baskinger second. Gonzalez, Batson, and McCurry are your top five. Then it's Fitzwater, Watson, Gardner, Matthews, and Shelton, your top ten right now. Out of the race after that wreck include Shane Lake, Chris Dodd, John Art, Sean Galligan, Dallas McIntosh, Daniel Voiles, and James McLeod. So we only have 27 cars still running. 23 of them on the lead lap and a good portion at the back of the field are damaged so getting ready to go back green once again we haven't even reached the halfway point halfway point of this race will be somewhere around midway point of lap 24 so we still got a ways to get to that and I'm not really sure having these lap cars in the inside line is helping a whole lot because it's almost like having a double wide start in the first three rows, which I think is causing a lot of the issues of drivers making those aggressive three and four wide moves down here in the dogleg front straightaway. But don't be surprised. We have another caution very soon. Green flag back in the air here at Phoenix. And Chris, or make that to Cole Baker, almost was able to stick with Jordan Lopez, which Lopez would not have liked to have had happen down here to turn one. Lopez, Baskinger, Gonzalez, I believe they all cleared the traffic. And I think we may be under caution again. We are. Caution is out for the fourth time today. And I couldn't tell who that was on pit road. It might have been the 12 of Cody Smart, but I'm not 100% certain. Let me guess. Turn one. Yep, turn one. One set of skid marks there, though, it looks like. And it was indeed Cody Smart in the 12, so it looks like he might have gotten spun by somebody here on the restart. I think Pit Road is open. Let's see if Lopez comes down Pit Road or if he's just waiting for the pace car to pick him back up. And it looks like that's all that the case is, so let's uh, see what happened to Cody Smart. Well, actually, Cody Smart's problem was a result of this. Watch this as Kev Shear is going to go to the inside of his teammate, Chris Dollerton. It just kind of slides up into Dollerton's left rear. 
That sends the 80 around right in front of Holly Davis. Shot right there by Charles Samfer. Wow! Seth Cole and Dylan Pote just avoiding. You saw right there the 12 goes spinning down to the inside. There he is. He tries to keep it off the inside wall. Turns it back to the left. A car's going to snap around on him. Same thing happens for the 27 of Joshua Osborne. Smart up and into the wall. and Oh, I think he got stuck in the safer barrier. I don't think I've ever seen that happen here at Phoenix. That's why he had to teleport to Pit Road. Oh, and you see the black smoke erupting. His day is done. So it has not been a good day for the Young Motorsports Fords. That'll be the third of their blue ovals out of the race, leaving Levi McIntyre the lone survivor of that team. And Kev Shearer very badly damaged as well after getting contact with uh, Charles Sanford there heading to turn one. So that brings out the caution once again. Huh. <sighs> Will we get a green flag run? That's the continuing question. Probably the answer is no. Let's go back for the restart. Well, after that wreck, one car behind the wall, leaving us with 26 still left on track, and I believe 23, or no, 22 still on the lead lap. That car out of the race is obviously Cody Smart. So, as we get ready to go back green, Jordan Lopez enjoying all these laps led, albeit under the yellow flag. Lopez last year was a former winner in the Pizza Deck series, finished fifth overall in the point stands, was pretty close to making it into the final four to compete for the championship last season, but came up just short. Looking good here today, and of course Jordan Lopez, uh, keep in mind, got his best career Hershey's Cup series finish here at this very racetrack, fourth place back in, I think it was season four. The green flag back in the air. Let's see if they can make turn one safely. Are we still under green? We are. Oh, it's a Christmas miracle. We are still green flag racing, but we might not be for long. That was almost three wide there with McCurry, Watson, and Fitzwater in a battle for fifth. Right there, nose to tail, you've got three former winners at this racetrack. Fitzwater, who has two wins here. McCurry, the defending winner, and Kyle Matthews, a former winner at this track as well. Remember back to last year, Kyle Matthews was on the high side of a three-wide situation, battling for the lead out of uh, what used to be turn four and then ended up getting put into the wall, wrecked out. So I'm certain he doesn't want to remember that Phoenix race. This is a good battle for second between Jake Baskinger and Brandon Gonzalez, but it's going on about nine-tenths behind the current race leader, Jordan Lopez. But we're finally getting a green flag running. We just had to take out what some 16 cars to do it and as soon as I say that I jinx it because the caution is out again Keith Batson's on pit road now that car was damaged already I'll bet he was probably slightly off the pace and probably got hooked by someone caution waves for the was this the fifth time today might be the sixth and it's another incident down on the exit of the dog leg into turn one and Batson's leaving Excuse me, Batson is leaving pit road. There's a pit sign down back there, which indicates a driver is pulled into his stall and is retired from the race as well. So I don't think Batson was the only one involved in the wreck. Let's take a look and see what happened. We are now past the halfway point, but boy, have we been under pacing for a good portion of it. Now, Trent Dunham's been pretty quiet today, but uh, he gets involved in this wreck. See what happens here. There's Scott Roush. He's going to move up. Opens the door for Trent Dunham to go down to the inside. And then Trent just lost it. People don't realize, but that's very flat down there on that apron. And when you turn the car hard to the left with the slick racing conditions, it's very hard to keep that car underneath you. And then up further, that was uh, Chris Dollarton getting into it with Seth Cole. Turned Seth Cole up into the wall. Sanfer saves it. Kev Shearer does not. And neither does Holly Davis. Both those cars are going to go up and hit the wall pretty hard with the rear of their Chevrolets. And there is Trent Dunham. And is he going to hit any of these guys? Or is he going to get through okay? I think he gets through okay. I'm kind of curious as to who that car was that retired out of the race. Because usually when a pit sign remains down on pit road, that means that a car has come to pit road and parked it. Uh, but we'll find out in just a moment as we're going to go back now for the green flag. Once again here at Phoenix. And I don't really know who that pit sign was down for because nobody else has retired out of the race since Cody Smart two cautions ago. 
We do have another car that's a lap down, though. Keith Batson came to pit road under that last green flag run, as we saw he was on pit lane, and he has now fallen a lap down. Leaders joining Cole Baker, Joshua Osborne, uh, Kyle Keith, and who's the other one? And Dougie Shears. So as we get ready to go back green again, it's Lopez, Baskinger, Gonzalez. It's been the top three that way for the past ten or so laps. Benny Watson right now in fourth. Kyle Matthews is fifth. Sixth is Zachary Fitzwater. Seventh, Levi McIntyre. Eighth, Jessica Shelton. Ninth, Johnny Gardner. And John Cedino completes the top ten. Anthony McCrory gave up fifth place to come to pit road under this our latest caution. As we get set to go back green, and I believe my calculations are correct, it will be with about 18 laps remaining. 19 laps. Lopez gets away. Baskinger clears into second. Gonzalez trying to get by Baker. He will do so. He's in third. Kyle Matthews was able to get around Benny Watts, and now he's up in the fourth position. Fifth place. Right now, Benny Watson. He's getting a little bit of held up by Cole Baker as Levi McIntyre will challenge around the outside for that spot. And he will take it. Now tries to keep that momentum up there in the higher middle groove of turns one and two to get around the lap car of Cole Baker. But he might be able to succeed in doing that down here into turns three and four. Battle brewing again for second place. Gonzalez trying to reel in Baskinger as McIntyre does make the pass on Baker. Benny Watson trying to get by. He may have actually just pushed Cole Baker through the front straightaway. That brings Jessica Shelton and John Cittadino into this battle for sixth. Watson will make the pass though, and now it's a battle for seventh. Shelton, Cittadino, and Zachary Fitzwater. Wow, Cittadino way up the racetrack there. That opens up the door for Joseph Swigley to close in on this battle. And somehow, someway, Seth Cole with the whole front end missing is almost into the top 10. He's right there in the 12th position. Actually, they've got him scored in 11th place. And he's about to crack the top 10 as he's going to go around the 21 of Swigley. Up ahead, Fitzwater trying to challenge Shelton. That would be for 7th place. Baker slotted there in the lap car by himself. Good battle here between Matthews and McIntyre. McIntyre almost moving Matthews out of the way as he's going to take the fourth position. Nice pass by the 99. This all going on a long distance over, well, I think now about two seconds. Yeah, 2.2 seconds ahead, Jordan Lopez. He is gone. And we haven't seen really anybody of the leaders coming to pit road under these last few cautions, which says to me they're probably good to go the entire rest of the way on fuel. So we're probably watching the race to the checkers. Baskinger still second. Gonzalez still third. Then you've got McIntyre, who's trying to run down those two. He's got a fast race car, does McIntyre. 27.8 he ran last time. And these drivers were about uh, five one hundred slower. Of course, they're both battling each other right now. McIntyre's just laying down laps. Kyle Matthews and Benny Watson, they've gotten around Cole Baker now. Matthews in fifth, Watson in sixth. And Watson trying to close the gap up between himself and the Kings Island Chevrolet. Let's see if he's close enough to make a move down here into turn one. Not quite. He drove it deep into that corner there, though, did Watson, trying to get to the back bumper and may have lost a little ground as a result. Still continuing to pull away is Jordan Lopez. Let's see if he would have to deal with any traffic soon. That's Charles Samper and Kyle Keith. They are exiting turn two now. Lopez just got into the exit of the dog leg. So I don't know if in the next 11 laps, Lopez would close in on those drivers or not. But if he does, slower traffic could play a factor. It did play a factor in yesterday's Pizza Deck Series race. The leader, Nick Gunther, was really nowhere close. He was about a half a track behind the tail end of the field. But Lopez today, 
with a little bit longer of a distance and a little bit longer of laps here, he might end up having to deal with those cars. And of course, the last thing he wants to see right now as well is a caution, because that would evaporate his three plus second lead over Jake Baskinger. Like I said, no, no surprise to see Lopez out here running well. He had seven career Hershey's Cup Series starts before this season began, and his best finish was a fourth place here at this very racetrack. Not this configuration, but this track. So, no surprise to see him running well at the place where his best career finish was at. I thought maybe Levi McIntyre would be reeling in Baskinger and Gonzalez a lot quicker than he has. He can see the both of them, but he's not really closing in as quickly as I was expecting. Watson's in fifth, and look who's making a charge now. Two-time Phoenix winner, Zachary Fitzwater, who won this race in back-to-back -back seasons, season three and four. He's all over the back bumper of Watson, trying to crack the top five. Ooh, oh my goodness, he almost moved Watson out of the way. I thought he was gonna make a move up on the outside line there in turns one and two, but instead thought about going on the low side, and that almost cost him. Battle here for seventh. Kyle Matthews, Johnson, Adino, and then there's Seth Cole there still. I don't know how that car is still up to speed and running in the top 10, but somehow, some way it is. I guess aerodynamics don't really matter here as long as your engine's still running. Jessica Shelton right there. Two of the Retro Racing Enterprises cars running up here in the top 10 here today, having a good outing. Joseph Swrigley right now outside the top 10 and 11th. Nice showing for him. 12th place right now would be Trent Dunham, who I believe, if I remember correctly, brought out the last caution. 13th place right now is RJ Reynolds. 14th, damaged car of Anthony McCrary. 15th is Johnny Gardner. 16th is Dylan Poteet. 17th place is Scott Roush. He was out in front before, and now he's kind of faded back. This is, uh, I don't know what happened. If they made an adjustment he didn't like or what. 18th place right now, Holly Davis. 19th place would be Kev Shearer, and Chris Dollerton right now would complete the top 20. Charles Sanford right now, the last car on the lead lap in the 21st position, and the leader is closing on him. About half a straightaway back. Lopez this time by at the line will hit four laps to go here at Phoenix. He's got over a five second lead, so even if he does catch the traffic, I don't know if that's gonna be enough time slowing him up that uh, Baskinger and Gonzalez would be able to catch him. I mean, Lopez hasn't even yet caught Charles Sanford. If Lopez goes to victory lane though, it will be a weekend sweep for the Kevshear Racing Tech Team. Gunther went to victory lane yesterday. And if Lopez goes to victory lane today, it'll be a Kevshear Racing Tech rookie that would go to victory lane in back-to-back -back races here this weekend at Phoenix. Wow, Lopez, Lopez is pitting! Oh my goodness, I told you I didn't know what the fuel window was. He's coming to pit road. Gonzalez is in as well. I believe Baskinger has already been on pit road. I think he might have pitted a lap earlier. It's come down to fuel strategy. Who's got the fuel to make it? The lead just got turned over to McIntyre. As you just saw, there was the 38 on pit road. It's a fuel strategy race here at Phoenix, and McIntyre, Watson, and Fitzwater are all nose to tail for the lead with two laps to go. Oh, is McIntyre pitting? Oh, nope, he's staying out. McIntyre's gonna try and risk it, trying to get his first win since season five at Lime Rock. Watson, a four-time winner last year as a rookie, and Fitzwater trying to get his third career win at this racetrack. White flag, one more lap to go. They're gonna risk it, these three. A fuel strategy race here at the end. McIntyre, Watson, Fitzwater. McIntyre's going for it. He does not come to pit road. He's gonna run out of fuel trying to get his first win of the season. Through turn three and four, Watson tries to make a charge. He can't quite get there and Levi McIntyre gets his first win of the season, his first win in two years, and it comes here today at the reconfigured Phoenix International Raceway. 
it was looking like it was going to be all Lopez. But fuel did play a factor. And McIntyre, with the fuel strategy, is going to pick up the victory. And did Levi McIntyre just make his way into the playoffs for what I think would have been the first time since, I want to say, Season 3. Looking to see just to confirm that. No, McIntyre didn't make it in Season 3. Did he make it in Season 4? Nope, not in Season 4. I know he didn't in Season 5. Might be Season 2 was the last year that McIntyre was in the playoffs. Let me see. McIntyre... Uh, yeah. Season 2 was the last year McIntyre was in the playoffs. And he just might have put himself in the playoffs here for what would only be the second time in his career. Seasons 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6, he wasn't in the playoffs. Wow. That's right, because, uh, what was it? Season 5 and Season 4, his wins ended up taking place during the playoffs. He hadn't won prior to that. And finally gets this win. I believe it was a win at Las Vegas back in Season 2 that helped him make the playoffs. And here today... An early win this season might have gotten him back into the playoffs, but how about that for fuel strategy? What a race. I mean, yeah, it was a wreck fest at the beginning, but that was exciting at the end. I didn't have a clue what the fuel window was, and some drivers just could not make it. And as a result, McIntyre wins. Watson brings it home in second. Fitzwater in third. I think he likes this racetrack. John Cittadino, great run for him there in fourth. And somehow that damaged car of Seth Cole managed to finish in fifth. And then you got teammates back-to-back -back there, sixth and seventh. Shelton and Matthews. Swrigley there in eighth. Trent Dunham with a damaged car was ninth. And a damaged car for Anthony McCurry finishes in the tenth position. Rest of your top 15 were Dylan Poteet, R.J. Reynolds, Johnny Gardner, Scott Roush, Holly Davis. And the rest of the cars to finish on the lead lap were 16th through uh, 19th. And that was Dollarton, Shearer, Samford, and Lopez, who had to give up the lead to Pitt. Last car on the lead lap in 19th place. Jake Baskinger finished uh, a lap down in 22nd. Brandon Gonzalez a lap down in 20th. They couldn't make it on fuel either. And also a lap down with cars of Cole Baker, Keith Batts, and Joshua Osborne, Dougie Shears, and Kyle Keith. And then after five or six, I lost count cautions. All these drivers out of the race. Smart, Lake, Dodd, Art, Galligan, McIntosh, Voiles, McLeod, Walsh, Young, Bryant, Lamas, Anderson, Miles, Gilbert, and Hartnett. Drivers that are going to take big hits in the point stands will be Arndt, uh, McLeod, Walsh obviously being the points leader, and Miles. Those four were top ten in the points coming into today's race. But that is going to do it here from Phoenix. What a race there. I mean, yeah, we've had some, we had some wreck fest at the beginning of both of our uh, two races this weekend, but some pretty exciting finishes there at the very end. Hope you guys enjoyed today's race here, though, from Phoenix. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, to become part of the crew today. We have shown you full feature results. These are your rookie points and your overall standings heading into next week. All three series, Trucks, Pizza Hut X Series, and Hershey's Cup Series, are staying here in the state of Arizona as we will go racing at Arizona Speedway next, so you'll want to tune in for that. That's going to be an interesting race, and that could also be a fuel mileage race as well. But we'll see you guys next time as you've been watching a production of the NSRA Offline Race Nets. Best Levi McIntyre takes the checkers here today at Phoenix.